Martin Morganfield, welcome to A Breath of Fresh Air. What a joy to meet you and talk about your music. I've been a, a long time fan of your late father, who of course was the late great Muddy Waters. What was it like? Yeah. Uh, you're his eldest son, right? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm the first born. So I know from from having um, read a little bit about you and about him that he was always on the road. At the height of his career when he started having children, he wasn't around much, was he? No, he wasn't. Uh, he, he stayed on the road. I mean, he was always wire money home to take care of us, but, but, but Dad stayed on the road. And then when he did come home, he was so wore out. He would sleep like three days. Really? So, yeah. Do you remember the feelings that you had as a child around that? I, I really didn't because I really didn't understand the uh, significance that Dad played and and blues and especially Chicago blues. I had no idea. <clears throat> I mean, I was into Motown and other stuff. So, right. You know. So, so you didn't understand the music that he was making. But what about what about the fact that he was an absent father? How did that affect you? Well, it affects me immensely. But I, but my mom had seven brothers who kind of took up the slack, you know, uh, for dad. And, you know, my mom was, was a fantastic mom also. So it was okay. And, and when was it that you realized what your dad was doing and just how popular he was? I think, I think uh, I was, I was in high school and I got in some trouble in high school and, and, uh, you know, they called my dad and he came up there and I was noticing how excited all the teachers and the principal was. And I was like, you know, it's just dad. And uh, it kind of hit me there, you know, that uh, he was somebody uh, well known. Right. And and what did you feel about that? I loved it. I loved it. But but I still had to get my blues too, right? So. But I loved it. So I'm off, I'm, I'm off, off the west side of Chicago. So, but I loved it. It's great. So, so was it difficult for you? Um, you? You say that you're already into making music yourself, and you're already into the blues. Was it the same kind of blues that he was doing? You know, I, I really don't know. I, I say this in a, a lot of interviews. I, I think I was tapping on my mother's stomach inside of her. I came here. I came here with the blues. I was born the blues. Really? I mean, I, well, notes ran through my head at such an early age. I, I got sconed so many times for beating on furniture, patting on stuff, and I finally went and got me a big, big lard pen. I mean, huge, and I started to plan that. That's before Dad started to buy me a set of drums every year for Christmas. But <laughs> he wanted you started, to play the drums. <clears throat> no, I did. I started off as a drummer. So now I, I I don't play bass professionally, but I play bass. So that's my instrument of choice now. What attracted you to the drums in the first place? Uh, I just uh, I just thought it was the with the beat. You know, it was it was it was the rhythm. You know, it's the bottom. So you know, and that just I was attracted to uh, making people move. You know. If you ain't got a funky drum beat, you ain't got it. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so so it's all got to be built from the ground up, right? <laughs> if you got a bad drummer, you might as well forget it because the band going to sound bad. If you don't have a good drummer, just forget it. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the, the drummer gets paid very little attention, uh, generally speaking. I mean, I'm sure the band members oh, all... No, no. Now, now, when I come up, <clears throat> when I come up, there was the James Brown thing, uh, get a drummer song. And all the women was over the drum. So I was right where I needed to be. <laughs> what, about I right that, I needed to be. what about the fact that so many groups started using the, the, the drum machine to replace drummers with? What do you think about that? Not, not, not traditional blues, not, not Chicago blues. No. No, it's, that's rock and uh, uh, different stuff, but not blues. You know, you got to have a blues drummer. You got to have a, a blues pianist. <laughs> you know, you get, that's the blues. So what was it, or what is it about the Chicago blues that that had you already as as a baby, you 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 had it in your DNA? What is it about that style of music that really grabs you? To be honest with you, it's it just wasn't the blues, it's music period. The gender you have is music period. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just 
I mean, I could, if, if dad had been a painter, I'd have been a painter. If you had been a carpenter, I'd have been a carpenter. You know, boys marked the dad, girls marked the moms. But um, for me, it was just music. It's uh, generations and generations of music that I was just fortunate enough that I, I got some of it in me. So I, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Did he teach you a lot? Dad didn't teach me anything. He told me when he shared with my mama me. That's what he <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I didn't kid you. I was probably tapping on my mother's stomach and said, I come here with what it was. I come here with, with this music brand. I took that. I couldn't get with it. I couldn't get rid of it. I ran and I ran and I ran. And, I, and these beats are always in my head. You know, I would lay down on the beer at night and I would pat on the mattress. I've always had these. Uh, well, but as you grew up and he was still around for some time, I mean, albeit that he was on the road most of the time. Did he encourage you in your music? Oh yeah, I mean, I've had I've had you know smaller garage bands and house bands and uh, whatever I needed and equipment. Uh, he would always call up his manager Scott Cameron and tell him, "Hey, my son came out there." And I tell you, the first time I went by Scott Cameron's house and I went down in his basement, it was a huge basement, but from wall to wall was it nothing but brand new amplifiers. <laughs> Some bigger than I was. And he just said, well, hey, pick what you want. Get in there. And I was like a kid in a candy store, right? <laughs> I bet. So, yeah, Dad, I was, so Dad was happy that you'd chosen music as your career oh, path. Of course. Yeah, any of us. Yes, of course. Really? But you, did, you didn't start out um, as a professional musician, did you, Mud? You, I read that you actually drove a bus for a while. I, no, I drove trucks. Oh, you drove, drove a truck for a while. I drove big race for a while, but but uh, what uh, like I said, I've always had had music. But my belief, this is just my belief. You just don't wake up one morning and go outside and get no blues. You, you got to go through some alcoholism, the recovery, something cancer. You just don't go outside and, and get the blues. And man, man, everybody that play the blues don't mean they got the blues. They just know how to play it. Yeah, yeah. You got to get. Some so you've, you've really got to live it before you can share Absolutely. it. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. So what did you go through that really that really gave you that Chicago blues flavor? Oh, God. I, I, it didn't take me all day to tell you what I went through on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> it was a First pretty all, rough neighborhood? Sure. I had to fight every day. Sure. Ain't care about me being B.B. King's son or Muddy Water's son or Little Walter's son. They didn't care. I had to establish my own self. Absolutely. But w were you picked on or that was just, everyone was fighting? Pretty much, you know, uh, you know if you didn't, you, you got ran over. I come up in that kind of time. I, I come up in a time uh, um, when Martin Luther King was assassinated. So, you know, it's rough. You know, I'm, I'm in the blizzard of 68, 69. We didn't have food in the house. And, and me and my mom and my other sibling, we had to we had to carpool, get through the snow to go out in, in areas and find bread to break on these. Wow. Did you start writing, songwriting about times like that? Well, yeah, we would go to certain store markets and see what they had. A lot of shelves were empty because the trust couldn't get in and deliver food. So it was a pretty rough time. So I got some blues. Yeah, you 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 paid your dues, right? And did you That's start? It. Did you start writing songs about those uh, about those times? Most of my songs are, 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 are about women, relationships I've had that failed, some succeeded. Most of my songs are like that. You know what I mean? I just, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not good with the, the kind of blues that make you lean over in your food and you cry all the time and, you know, because your lover left you. I like people to get up and dance and have a great time. If you lose that stuff for half an hour, an hour, that's fine for me. Yeah, right. Right. Well, I love I love um, all the tracks that you've put out to date. Do you have a favourite one? Uh, on that album? Well, on any. In, uh, on any. We can go anywhere with this. So uh, I'll, I'll come to the, to the latest album, but is there an overall favourite track that you could point to? Well, well I, I am uh, really ecstatic about the single praise him uh, because I'm, I'm, I've lived over 60 years 
and God has been good to me. And I had to get that testimony out. So, you know, and that's my first single gospel bluesy kind of song, you know, but it's definitely a message in it. What What's the message? What are you talking about in there? I'm talking about me. Go on, tell Listen. us more. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about me. Listen to it. It'll tell you. It's a testimony. I'm talking about me. What I woke problem? up one morning and I couldn't see. I couldn't see the forest out beyond the trees. I come up, I was I was blinded by flashy things and other stuff. I couldn't see. I thought I woke myself up. You know, I thought I was my own God. I thought I woke myself up. How silly is that now, you know? But uh, it's a testimony. Listen to it. It, it pretty much tell you. So and, where did you know, where, where where did the revelation come from? How did you get to that point of 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 writing that testimony? I'm a blues man. Suffering. I'm a blues man. Same way Dad and them got it from, from the South or picking cotton, you know, and living in huts. You know? He con he continued writing about all that stuff all the all through his life, didn't he? Oh, you little woman. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're always a good vehicle to cause men to suffer. Tell me in, in the movie, she, she Ray Charles, he feel the risk. <laughs> you tell the woman was large. <laughs> yeah, blues man. That's all it is. So, blues man is something that you're born with. You can't develop into a blues man. You've either got it or you haven't. I mean, you've got to put pay your dues. You've got to suffer to have the to have the material to I'm going to give you express. a hand. You said a mouthful. We are born. You, you're born with it. You know, and, and I tell a lot of my young up and coming artists that you don't need no substance to make you sound better. It's a lot. You either got it or you don't. And how would anybody know if they have got it? You, you know, you, you love my songs, right? Yeah. yeah. I know you got it, but I mean, in terms of in terms of other people who claim to be blues hey, players. I, 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 there's a million blues man. So I like B.B. King, Bobby Rush. I mean, there's a lot of my like, and and they are they blues man. Right, right, right. When when you when you were growing up and you discovered how famous your dad was. Did you start appreciating the music that he was making? You know what? I, I, the only way I can put that is that in order for you to get some blues, I had to go out and get some blues. So I had to, I had to go out into my environment where I was born and raised at and experienced a lot of things, failure, some success, more failures and success, but I had to go out and experience with some things in order for me to have some blues because I'd have just been, had I did it any other kind of way just because my dad was Muddy Waters, I'd have been faking. Right. It wouldn't have been real. But did I had you to have my own story? Yeah, I hear you. But did you study his music at all? Did you really go through his catalog and analyze it or or you kind of put that aside and went and did your no, own thing? No, people, people think I made a deal. I've never looked at none of his clips. You know, the only thing I do, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna record a song of my dad's, like on Del My Records, but I'm on now, uh -huh. all I would do is have somebody put that song in front of me in the studio, in the booth, and I'll just sing that song. I don't look at clips of dad, how he move, how he walk. I mean, that is so phony. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is so phony. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. You know, you can't make it up. And that's why, you know, hey, I praise God for allowing me to be a, even a part of my dad. Yeah. But you must have listened to his music. You must have heard what he was doing once you started to get an appreciation for... That catalog? Oh, that catalog? No, I haven't. Really? <laughs> it's too big. No, that's not. Uh, Red Snake, I don't even know. I heard people talk about I don't even know how it go. I have to listen to it and try to sing it. But no, no. How no, amazing. Wow, that's yeah. a that's a surprise. Um, you, you um, it's been said of you that not only um, do you resemble him, but the tone and the 
timbre of your of your voice is very much the same as he, as muddy waters you sound like him your phrasing is the same and that's just that's happened naturally that's just part absolutely. of who you are and that's why i praise god and i thank my dad and my mom for me how does it feel to be compared to him is that a good thing for you or, or a bit of a double-edged it's a double sword? sword it's a double-edged sword it swings both ways I could be in London in a big club and, and I could be doing some of my stuff and people are all out, hey, do hoochie coochie, man, do mojo. <laughs> you know? So it's a double ass boy. And some people, oh, I heard Muddy Waters, you know, woo, woo, woo. but I think that uh, people who didn't get a chance to see my dad ever alive, I think that I can give them a taste of what that may have been like. And at the same time, honor my dad. You can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. I want you to come to Australia or I'll have to come to Chicago and, and see you. I'd like nothing better. Um, do you do do you do those songs of his sometimes on stage? Who, dad songs? Yeah. Yeah, half of my show mostly is his songs. Uh, but when I record, I only record a song with dad's or two and then the rest of them are my, my uh, written songs that I wrote. Right. Um, I've been, been to Byron Bay over there, me, Buddy Guy, Santana. Mabel Staples, the Byron Bay Blues Festival. You've been, or, this, or th that's the one that's coming next year? Yeah, I've, I've been there, where I think. Oh, uh, you've been? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah I've been there. Yeah. Oh, what a shame Wonderful. I didn't catch you there. Yeah, yeah but all, it always rains there. It's always wet as anything. Me and Bonnie, me and Bonnie Ray did a thing where, you know, she sitting in dad's lap. She sitting in my lap. We took a picture. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, great festival over there. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you'll have to come back. We'd love to see you again. Um, it was um, Mud Morganfield, who is the is the, the eldest son of Muddy Waters I'm chatting with here. Um, Mud, in uh, 2015, you did a tribute album for your dad. It was called Four Pops, a tribute to Muddy Waters. That one actually won a blues music award in the traditional blues music, in the traditional blues album category. Um, yes. you, you must have been pretty proud of that. You know, I'm always proud of stuff that there's only one Muddy Waters. Let's just get that straight. But I'm always proud to respect and honor my dad. That's just, uh, that's just it. Again, if you had been a painter, I'd have been a painter. So, you know, uh, my mom and my dad is, and my kids are probably some of the most important people in my life. So, Of course. What about your other siblings? Did, did they also follow in his footsteps? But my brother, my younger brother, Big Bill Morganfield, he 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 uh he he does dad, he does he sings too. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but it's Big Bill Morganfield. And then my younger brother, Joseph Morganfield, just passed a couple of years ago. I'm sorry. He's a young man, 40 some years old, just fall dead. You know, so hey, it was really a tragedy to the whole family. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. And and uh any of the girls? You know what? No, none of the girls. I got I got two daughters uh, that sing, but they only sing gospel. But I got five boys can't sing happy birthday. <laughs> and so <laughs> don't imagine that. I got two girls that make the hell on your back stand up, but they only sing gospel. You know, and I got five boys who don't sing at all, don't play an instrument, and, you know, and they more listen to this rap stuff. So <laughs> You know. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, Mud, you were actually born Larry Williams, um, and uh, Muddy's real name was McKinley Morganfield. How did yeah. the name, well, how did Muddy get Muddy Waters, and how did you get Mud Morganfield? No, you know, the story, my grandmother used to catch Dad all the time in Mississippi when he wasn't in the cotton field playing in mud. So that's how he got the name Muddy Waters. He would always love to play in mud and do his fingers and stuff. So, oh. so my great grandmother named him uh, Muddy Waters. Oh, very cool. And and when did you take the name Mud? I took the name as in my career because I wanted people to know that I was Muddy's eldest son, and I took the first three letters of his name M U D. And Morganfield is my birthright name. Right, right, right. You, you didn't. Williams. Sorry. Williams is my mother's 
making name. Right. You know, but Wagenfield is my dad's um, last name. So yeah, got it. And um, you, you didn't really consider becoming a professional blues musician until after Muddy died in 1983, did you? What was it about his death that really yeah, turned your path? 83. He, he passed in 83. Oh, didn't did I say 93? Sorry, I mean, yeah, yeah his his death in 83. <laughs> That's right. I just, uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, what was it yeah. that turned you? Because I I had to, I had to get some blues, you know. Then you know, Dad, some there's some big shoes to follow. So you know, I you know, I, I mean, I mean, it's only one BB King, and so it's gonna be one Muddy Waters. So them some big shoes to fill. So. You know, and then I had to go get my own blues, and that's what I did. You've, uh, yeah, you certainly got the blues. Do you still have to keep accumulating blues? Do you still, I mean, what, how much is enough to keep putting out, you know, how much suffering do you need to have? Or if you're a, a living bluesman, all, do you need to keep it coming? It's not all suffering. You know, it's not all suffering. Sometimes it's happy stuff. Uh, you know, it's just stuff that people... Uh, live, do what we do. So you, you know? so you, when you said you got to go out and get some blues, actually, what you're saying is you got to go out and get some life. Yes, I went out and got it. I went out and got it. Like I said, you know, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Chicago. It's a rough place. It's a beautiful city, great city, but it's still a rough place for an African American young man. It's still rough today. It's worse. Is it? To be honest with you, yes. Way worse than when I come up. When I come up rough, two guys could not get along. They fight, be best friends tomorrow. Now there's murder for 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 light disputes, disputes. Uh, he got my girlfriend. And that's because there are so many guns just flooding the city. And they in a young people's hand. Yeah. Plus, they legalized smoking marijuana. So almost everybody in Chicago was riding around drunk. He had a gun. You know they drunk. It, I mean, not even just the young old ones too. They all drunk. They been smoking weed all day long and they driving out there in the traffic and they got guns in their cars. It's a bad combination, isn't it? It's a bit of, it's a, it's a real worry for sure. Um, so, I mean, is some of your compositions about that? <laughs> no, but I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just with you. Just what I told you gave you the blues. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really brought me down. You're right. <laughs> just what I said to you, it gave you some blues. You was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really a, a sad reflection on on the state of the world today and in so many areas we're in trouble aren't we yeah well only thing you only thing you can do is just try to protect yours and and stay out That's the way really... I mean, i'm not and, i'm not a young kid anymore, so. and and as you said the chicago blues and your particular style of chicago blues is not one to try and make you put your head in your soup and cry you said to me you want people to get up and dance and really groove to that music. Absolutely. So it's about giving people a high. You've got to have the blues, but you want to you want to make them feel good from hearing your music, right? Instead of crying about someone they lost or a child they lost or, or a loved one, a mother, father. You know, I, I just, when you come out, you pay to come out and have a great time. And I just think that you should at least enjoy that time you can pick it back up when you get home. But right now, you need to enjoy and have a great night and you can retrieve home knowing you had a great night. Yeah, right, right. Um, so, Mud, the latest album that you have out is called Portrait, but it's actually uh, been remixed and remastered from one that you had out previously called Son of a Seventh Son, hasn't it? That's really hard yes. to say, all those S's. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, tell me the story around around Delmark bringing that back out again. I like to say, great record label. They they saw something, and not to put down the other record label, but they saw something that was missed on this album. It didn't get what it needed to get, 
So they went in and had it remastered. Uh, Julia Miller of Dale My Records helped master it. And we added a few songs that we did in the studio and we put them on the album too, along with the very new uh, gospel single praise album. And mind you, you got some of the best Chicago players on there, like Kenny Smith, Willie Big Eyes Smith's son, Rick Crear, who was my dad's last good job player with John Prime before his dad died. Uh, you got E.G. McDaniel, uh, Bob Corritore, great hard player. Uh, who else? Bearhouse Chuck, he's deceased now. Great blues pianist, great players on there. So. That's an awesome track. Um, yeah. Praise him. Absolutely awesome. I, I also really like the version that you do of that classic Good Morning Little School Girl that's also been put onto that album um, yes. at, that, that wasn't on the first one. Yes. Why'd you, you, why'd you choose to do that one? What do you like about Good Morning Little School Girl? No, it's just, just a it's respect from the dad. You know, he recorded that song. I don't think he owned it, but he recorded it and I did it out of respect for dad. Well, no one's going to ever forget it, but that was my way of honoring my father. How do you feel when you're playing to an audience or recording his songs? What goes on inside of you when you when you are paying him that respect? To do the best I can. Do you think he would have been happy? Oh, God. And no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I remember him trying to teach my younger brother how to play guitar. And one thing about music, you can't force it. You know, our kids have to want to do it. They have to want this because you can, and my, my younger brother, Joseph, he was a, he was actually a pro, he could have been a pro basketball player. His game was basketball, but dad wanted someone to carry it on the legacy sort of like, and he was the baby boy and he, tried to push the guitar in his hands and of course he had it for a day, he put it down, he went shot some hoops. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did dad have some time to do that if he was so busy still right up until his death? How did he find well, Joe, the time? Well, Joe was the baby boy, so he was in the house and and uh and he Joe, you know, dad was trying to get Joe and show him a few chords, how to play, you know, but that wasn't that wasn't Joe Forte. All right. And and when he passed away, how did that affect you all? All of my brother. Yeah, well, all of all of you. I mean, you, say so you in particular. It, how? Immensely, immensely, immensely. When I got the call from his wife, I was just like, "No, you, no, no, he did not." And she was talking to me on the phone as the um, paramedics was working on him. What were the circumstances around his passing? Well, he had a heart attack. So we know he had, he had he had been having some chest pain, but like most people, we ignore that. Oh, we chalk it up as being gas, you know, and give me a couple of alka seltzers or something. Ah, oh, belts. But no, he had been he had been having some heart trouble, but he he self diagnosed himself and said it was something else. So when he had the massive heart attack, it pretty much done it. Right. So it was a pretty big shock for everyone. Yes. yes. And, a, and a huge loss for, for the music and world. He was because he had he had a, he had also had a single release on Del Mark. It feels good to be king. So he had he was uh, he was coming on. Yeah. It was a dream of his and it was coming true for him. Yeah. What was it? What was a dream of his? To just be a part of the same legacy that me and my younger brother Big Bill was. Being sons of Money Wars, we wanted to uh, show the world, you know, kind of like what dad left. You know, it's just, it wasn't a total loss. We're still here. We're ready and we're willing. Yeah. So you never got a chance to play with him? Uh, no, I've been to a lot of shows, but no, I never got a chance to play with him because I was pretty much still like in 2021 20, when he passed. Do you have a favorite song on Portrait? Uh, Again, uh, praise him. Praise him would praise him would be one. Tell us, tell us about one of one of the others though on there because we will have heard praise him already by now. Is, is there another one that's really that you're really close to? Okamoto. 
locomotive. It's uh, listen, listen to the solo that 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 house Chuck do. He's he's deceased now, but listen to that solo. Fantastic. Listen to Billy Flynn on guitar. Great solos. <clears throat> great great musicians. Midnight Lover. We did a fantastic job on that. <laughs> That's an it's an awesome album. Um, I'm very happy that it's that it's out there for everybody to listen to. And what comes next for you, Mud? Another album in, in 2024. Yeah? yeah. You're already oh, yeah. working on that? Yes. And, and will that be more of Dad's stuff or and some of your own as well? well? Well, let me just let me just be honest with you. There's there's never, if you look at my records, there's never a album that I'm gonna put out and not have at least one of dad's songs. It's my way. So I'm gonna always put one or two of dad's songs on there along with my own stuff. But in 2024, these are gonna be mostly all new songs that I've penned or someone else co penned with me. Which one of his songs do you like best? Same thing. Why do men go crazy? When a woman wear a dress so sharp. <laughs> same thing. Same thing is one of my favorites. Love it. Love it's it. so melodic. It's, I do it sometime on stage. It is such a sexy song, I think. It's me. So. Oh, that's brilliant. Mud Morganfield, thank you so much for talking with us today. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you and congratulations on this latest release. We can't wait to see. Um, what what the next album holds for us, and we want you back here at Blues Fest again. Come back on down. I'll try my best to get there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep yourself well, Mud. I'm trying. Good one. Thank you. Lovely, Bye. lovely to meet you. Bye now. Bye.